Hey everybody, it's the Hey Poopy Podcast. What that booty do from poop to pleasure to health? Hosted by me, Dave. And me, Ellen. Two curious people removing the stigma from your stinker. And why are we doing this? Because we love laughing and learning about butts and helping them to be the best they can be. And on this week's episode, we have a repeat offender. Suck Lord is on. And he brought us his new news about his colonoscopy. And he... Did a little show and tell. A little show and tell indeed. And you'll hear little things like this on the show. How are we going to do this? This is crazy. This is, this is a first for the show. I'm going to say. Nobody's ever showed me their butthole live. I mean, on you the might show. have to see my dick too, or should I hide that? I mean, do whatever is easier. Cup it. All right, hang on. Just turn I around. I can't believe I'm seeing a butthole live on the All show. Right. All right, let me take this my un- first. underwear off. Oh, you have a cute little tush. Thanks. How, how should we do this? Bend over. Uh, okay. And just, spread your cheeks. Just act like you're going to an exam. It's fine. Do I need a it's flash anatomy? Today? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> now the underwear is coming off. <laughs> it's, pro- it's probably a little hairy. I mean, you flashlight. This really is like cool. I want to take a photo of this so bad because like the positioning is so great. Go ahead. Oh, it doesn't look that bad. This is the thing in question. You see, there's like yeah, a yeah, little yeah. fold of skin there. Yeah, I do see a little bit of a fold of skin, but it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> well, I was gonna have if that. If anything, I would say your butthole looks a little bit like you have labias. Uh, what? <laughs> A, f- a fun, action-packed episode. A first, if you will. Oh, my. It, the first that we've been having recently after 200 episodes. It's, yes. it's mind-blowing. Yes. And if you'd like to know more about the show, me and Ellen, you can go on to heypoopypodcast.com. You can learn about us. You can learn about our cartoons. You can learn about our merch. Patreon. All that fun stuff if you go there and support the show. Yes. And on to the shit show. Hey, I'm just, you know, trying to find a place with like-minded people to talk about like-minded things about me or about poop and stuff. Hey, Poopy, how you doing? Hey, Poopy, how you doing? Oh, man, what's this right here? Is this, this is a podcast about poop? Hey, everybody. Yes, it is a podcast about poop. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's the Hey, Poopy podcast with... Dave. And Ellen, and this is episode... 204 but it'll be always be number yes. two to us. It is 204. Fucked, if you haven't heard last week's episode i fucked that up but i fixed it because dave reminded me it was me. funny because i thought like at one point i'm like when i was putting the episode together for this week i was like wait was it 204 i'm like no it's not it's not <laughs> this is 204 whoopsie doodles but we have a <laughs> repeat offender it's kind of like that bad Mexican food that you ate and it comes back again. <laughs> or an old friend you haven't seen. No, no, I'm making a joke because I had to. The look on our guest's face right now is of complete and utter disgust. First of all, you invited me back here. This isn't some like, this isn't some yeah. sort of acid reflux situation where I'm like coming on uninvited and unwanted. You no. You I want paint. you here. I want you here. Okay, all right. I just, I'm glad I, you're the here. characterization. Hey, I'm I'm glad you're here. I, I didn't. I'm, <laughs> I was trying to make a joke and it backfired. Yeah, it was very fucking funny. Thank uh, you. Thank you. We all laughed. I just, well, it was me only. Well, but <laughs> prior to this, we were just talking, discussing how you're like, you know, you're not in the best place right now. And then that, yeah, I know. Just dumped sorry. on you some more. So this is gonna, this is gonna be after a great episode. It's a good pod. <laughs> Everywhere I go. Anyway, if you haven't figured it out, we have Suck Lord back to the show. That's the Suck Lord. The Suck Lord, <laughs> <laughs> aka Suck. It's a title, not a I name. I wish this is at one point. I wish we had a video because your facial expressions are <laughs> priceless. I know, and, and I, I look, and I'm and very pretty. Completely warranted. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I got my period today, so my cramps are period. so bad that it's making me a little loopy. Great. Anyway, hi, Suck Lord. Welcome back. How many, first of all, uh, this is really the 204th episode of this shit. I can't fucking believe it. I know. Unbelievable. Neither. <laughs> I, I don't know how auspicious of a number that is, but <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to be here. The, the first thing I'm wondering is like how many repeat customers have uh, have you had a, a handful a yeah handful. less than dr. 10 dr evan goldstein like, brand dr. recently dr fong brand McDuff, dr fong you. so out of like um, 200 um, so-called episodes you've had only like 10 or so repeat guests yeah why am i so other. fortunate because you told me about your colonoscopy and i said do you want to come back on and you're like yeah okay okay i mean is this, this is what we're going to discuss because you just had one too 
I did too. Your first one? Yes. Okay. We dedicated an entire episode to it. Episode 201. It's all about my colonoscopy. I am hopeful that I can create an episode's worth of material based on my colonoscopy. Unfortunately, I was unconscious. (laughs) So I don't know. I don't have a whole lot to say about it. Well, you could tell us. Wait, did they give you photos? You oh, I guess we'll get into this. But did they give you like a whole packet of photos afterwards? They gave me this weird, like low res imaging thing, and it, they. I mean, the thing is, I mean, not to jump to the conclusion or the, you know, to reveal anything or no spoilers, but <laughs> you know, I, 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 they, they said like your your colon is fine, and Excellent. you don't have to come back for five years. Thank God. Excellent. No polyps. No nothing. They didn't oh, have good. to laser out nothing. Nice. So my asshole was totally clean, and I. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> And I, I mean, it, 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 of all the other things that I have to worry about in my stupid fucking life not, right now, I'm glad that like, <laughs> like cancer. colonic polyps can, and colon oh. cancer are not on the, on not on the scorecard. Yeah, you thank, can take th- cancer off. Thank you, thanks for that. And like, I just looked at this one little picture, and it was like this grayscale image of just like a, looked like some sort of flesh tube. A, t- a flesh tunnel and it looked very very tunnel of love it looked very very clean and just smooth and i'm just like yeah good enough i don't need to read the fucking details yeah mine had like it was like pages was like two or three pages why what like happened full to you? color nothing they, really? they look, look great i'm like thank you not sure why there's so many photos but <laughs> there's a lot there's a bunch well, it's a, it's which a i posted lot of, online too <laughs> it's a lot of places to travel through yeah. they wanted to give you a full there's like two and a half pages worth of pictures i mean i heard also recently that um ai is going to be better at detecting m- m- than a human eye with the cameras so. i was i was actually at lennox hill earlier today because uh, I'm getting an, my first MRI Ooh. Been having some stupid back problems. Apparently I've been bashed around quite a bit in my life and it's related. It's resulted in a little disc loss and some mild spinal arthritis. Jesus. Oh, joy, joy, it joy. And it's treatable and it's not like, it's not like a, it's not a death sentence, but it needs to be addressed. So I was up there at, uh, at, at Lenox Hill waiting for my MRI, which I couldn't get because I was in too much. I couldn't lay, I can't lay flat on my back right now. Oof. So I had to skip it. So they're sending me uptown to do the standing MRI. <gasps> it's fine. But so they, wait, what happens when you lay flat on your back? It's just that It painful? just fucking hurts and this so weird nerve sleep? shit. I mean, I, I'm, I'm slightly elevated. I'm not oh. like sitting up, but I just like, they wanted yeah, me yeah. like this and was just happened to be in the most stressful position. Oof. It's not a big deal. And I didn't come here to talk about that. It's, it's like, whatever. I've been, I've been, bashed around because I've had a very full exciting adventurous life you know and I've been a very rough and tumble type of person and I've taken some injuries and they accumulate over time so I'm just doing it I'm just I'm going to get that big once I get this MRI done and they can the doctor I go to this place in Brighton Beach this nice Jewish doctor you know in this Russian hospital Russian pain center is just going to look at the MRI and he's going to give me a big fat steroid shot right into my fucking spine I've had one of those yep I've had them too and they work wonders Mine then, worked for two days, and then really? well, it turns out I had a cyst on my back. Oh well, that's in, some... my, in my spine. Like, it was like pushing on nerves. Did they have that removed? No, I went. It was, the shot was supposed to take it away, and the the thing that pissed me off was before I had the shot, I finally started feeling like normal again after months and months and months of post surgery stuff. But oh, so you did have some surgery? Well, I had surgery for another thing unrelated, oh. but this was complete. I thought it was related, but it wasn't. It was totally separate. The cyst was like on my L5, L4, which is like controls the bottom part of your leg. Right. Anyway, he was like, the steroid didn't work. It worked for a couple of days, really, but it didn't really take the effect that he thought it was going to have. But he's like, oh, I can go in there and just drain it. And at that point, I'm like, I can't go. I'm not going back again. Like, I'm not fucking dealing with this again. So I leave every once in a while, I have a little bit of pinch of pain, but nothing that slows me down or anything. Like, I can actually walk before I was like barely. Can like, you fuck? Oh, yeah. That works. That's 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 fun. Okay, because I can't fuck right now. Oh, because, that sucks. Because of the shit. Yeah, that's why it's become a very high priority for me yeah. to get this handled. I mean, this has been Oof, a, this sorry. has been a thing that's been bugging me since two thousand and eight, and it's like coming oh, on, long. and I have okay. various treat. But it's I've also gone years and years and years where I don't feel anything. Yeah, yeah. It just happens to be flaring up right now, and it's like what? Have you Doctor Sarno did. It? Who, what's that? Dr. Sarno is all about the mind body connection. And maybe even though you, it's proof that you have a problem there. A lot of that we all have problems that we just live with. And a lot of it is stress induced. I mean, I have been living as a sort of like crimped and cramped and sort of repressed individual. And it's like 
the, the I went to the chiropractor and he had me get an X-ray and he was like looking at, at looking at look at my looking at my neck and he was like this is really really old shit like the stuff that's bothering you right now has been with you for a long yeah. time these these are long old ancient injuries and they're just coming to the surface now because of time the passage of time and that's the same uh, on a psychic level yeah. like all the sort of you know injuries that i've suffered in my mind and my soul and my emotions are also there and i think it's all interrelated and how yeah. i carry my body how i hold my body how i you know how i deal with my body and i think they're all absolutely totally connected yeah and like it just it was just like i'm trying to like go deep into my shadow and find the things that are holding me back or just sort of the this sort of self-repression and just sort of the and like the the contraction and just the misalignments in my in my spiritual and you know life and they're totally related to they manifest themselves or they express themselves in my body as well yeah and it's like a comprehensive approach you know you have yeah. to take care of your body your mind your soul your spirit all that crap and that's just what what i'm doing right now and it's not like it's not like like i haven't been beset with just like needless unnecessary tragedies i'm just being asked like i asked the universe like for more i wanted a more expansive life i wanted bigger experiences I wanted more money. I wanted more, you know, I wanted more. And the universe was like, okay, well, if that's ca the case, then here's all the things you have to deal with now. Yeah. All at once. Yeah. And pay the piper. Yeah. It's a pay the piper. It's all related. It's all related. Yeah. But the point was when I was standing on the line at Lenox Hill, filling out my forms, they had the little mammogram chart there and it was like yeah we're using ai yeah. to like figure this shit out yeah. it's gonna go and like the, the computer is smarter than we are looking at your imaging and yeah. finding irregular areas so yeah. cool like r2d2 is gonna be looking at my tits yeah and, and my, your asshole and my asshole and my neck and all those other things yeah. and finding the problems and i'm a hundred percent with that i love ai yeah yeah. I think that part's great, but at some point, when when the Terminator part of this 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 movie or kicks they in, take away all point, our jobs. Yeah, AI yeah. is going to be like, okay, so we're just trying to figure out what's wrong with your your asshole, your tits, with all y'all. And then at some point, yeah, exactly, and they're going to be like, oh, so what do we need you guys for? Well, <laughs> like, I why don't, are we? Look, I, that's, I think it's a way off, but it's, it's coming. I don't know about that because it, it, I don't see at this point. I've been fucking around with the AI art and I'm following the whole public debate. This has nothing to do with poop and assholes, unfortunately. But, uh, and just, it just seems like I don't see the motive for AI to like turn on us or eliminate I, us. I, I think it's, it, I, it doesn't seem to have any, I think will right now, of its own. I just think at some point, like it's just, it just becomes like its own thing. I'm not saying, I'm not saying full on Terminator, but I mean, I don't think I'll see it in my lifetime, but you know. Hey man, we made it. We created it got to, this far. to serve us, <laughs> and I don't see it getting uppity. You know, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I don't know, man. I, I'm. And if it does, then we'll unplug it. Then you just pull, unplug, pull the plug. Like so, yeah, I'm plugging shit. I don't know. I don't. I'm not. I don't. I don't. See, I don't. See, I don't see it. Look, I, 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 I love that. I, I would. I would love to have that. That sort of like belief, but. I don't know. I really At believe it's life, just going like, to be like we're going to have crumbling. R2-D2 following us around with having better, I, more sensible ideas than we are, but not like force. I think it's great for anything. science. I think it's great for like exploration. I think it's all that stuff I love, but I just think at some point... I could see it sort of like turning on us. But again, and it sh maybe, I hope I'm wrong. Maybe it should because we I'm fucking wrong. suck. Oh, yeah. Human race. Maybe we should listen to this it. This experiment should it just sh end. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 maybe it'll tell us something we this need to This pod is taking a definite dark turn. <laughs> what's, what's Can we get of? into... Hey, so Sucklord, how have you been pooping recently? Oh, is this the poop check-in? Yeah, that's part of our show. Okay, like we haven't gone into the nitty gritty of the of the of the colonoscopy, but we we've already spoiled the end that it was successful and that I have a healthy colon, and I feel like since that news, like I've been shitting great. Me too. Since my colonoscopy, do you think there's some relationship? I there? know for a fact. What do you think? Because it, you're clearing out all that bad bacteria when you do the prep, so you're empty, and then you get to rebuild again. I almost feel like more like psychically. Oh, like I know my my colon is clean and good and healthy. So like whatever sort of like psychosomatic, you know, uh, or hypochondriac 
you know, instincts I might have towards my shitting and pooping just all disappeared. It was like, like, while like my fucking back is broken, my fucking digestive system is working great. So it's almost like, yeah, let's go. And like, I was out in Long Island, Spain with some friends. They got a, ni a nice place, pool, and they cook and everything, and they eat really healthy. And I took this shit, which I was was the most magnificent thing that ever happened to me, <laughs> because it was almost like uh, an eight pack of hot dogs just fell out of my ass. Wow! It was just like, <laughs> you know, just like like six to eight nice little like breakfast sausage size yeah. struns just nice. all came falling out at once. Wow. It, was, it was enough material to make like a singular cable, but no, it came out like, it was almost like you just opened up like a bag of hot dogs and just dumped it. Wow. And it was like, wow, it's like, I'm shitting so great since my colonoscopy, just because I feel like I, I can, I've given myself permission to not worry about my shit anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's just coming out. That's good. Yeah. Relief shits. Wait, how yeah. long, when, when did you have your colonoscopy? How long was it? Uh, I was like maybe a month and a half ago. Okay. So pretty recent. Yeah. He, you text me or you DM'd me and you're like, I had a colonoscopy. And I was like, great. Come back on the show. Okay. So maybe we should just go through it. Wait, we got to check in with Dave. Oh, have right. you been ha pooping? Ha wait, we didn't even hear your poops. But yeah. I check in last because I'm always epic. Oh, okay. Okay. Dave oh. is always the same. Yeah, more of the same. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, I shit like twice today. I was about is, to go to the is bathroom. Is that unusual? No. I, I shit like two, two to three times a day. Usually it's like once in the morning, once in the afternoon at some point, and usually one at night. Three times. Yeah. Two he to three. He does a lot of pooping. So I went twice already today, and I was going to go again, and then the buzzer rang. Oh. And then I went, I was like, Excuse, where is this? Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> So that's going to interrupt. So the third one will be coming out later after Are this. Are you going to poop? Great. Your pants Why don't we do it show? live? Let's do it live. No, I, don't, <laughs> I, I do not have to go now. This cable's not long enough. We can post it to Scatbook. I don't have yeah, a, I don't have a remote. Some money. I don't have a remote mic. <laughs> no, I, I was thinking maybe you could just shit on this table. Oh, yeah. Okay. No. No. <laughs> I don't want to see it. <laughs> and I don't think you do either. I've seen a lot of things in life. <laughs> Me too, but. I don't want to sinister see him again either. I pooped this morning after my coffee. It was epic. It, I keep making these beautiful Bristol fours. I'm back to normal. So I, but I want to report because if anybody has been listening to the past couple episodes, I had a fissure thanks to my colonoscopy. Oh. And I had to see a specialist about said broken butthole. Oh. And I'd like to report it's finally healed. Nice. Congratulations. P applause, please. Play the sound effect. Yeah. We got My it. butthole is no longer broken. So what? I mean, I should have just listened to the episode. I didn't know. I thought it's we okay. were all going to share it together. But no, this has just been an epic journey of me and my broken butthole. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine has some weird like pocket has developed in his large intestine. and. Ah! Now he can't eat like sesame seeds anymore. <gasps> oh god, that sucks. He's like, what? I love eating this pound of sesame no, get, seeds. Listen, man, getting old is the worst. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's like just starting. For yes. Me and and my friends and it's just like i i don't i was not that long ago when i i remember having that feeling of invincibility that they talk about it's like it's just within living memory of not ever thinking about my body at all yeah and now it's a f broken mess yeah. and so it's going to get worse i'm looking at what's happening to my fucking parents and it's just like oh god the horrors that await but at least we're shitting beautifully Yes. Because I do want to say that in my 20s, my poo was no bueno. I've, I've had some tr troublesome times as well. <laughs> I mean, I have. That's why I have the floppy buttholes because yeah. of the sort of hemorrhoidal incidents, which we're going to get to eventually. So to everybody listening, listen to episode 150, Sucklord's first this episode where he talks about his floppy butthole. Once we get our money correct and we have our little little um, vlogging, podcasting, video, reality, TV shit things going. There's like a lot of cosmetic things I'd like to do to myself. Ew. Once I handle the essentials, we're going to get into the essentials. cosmetic stuff. And part of it is a butthole refurbishment. We talked about this already. Yes, so we I want to introduce to you to the doctor that helped my butthole last week. Yeah, okay, great. But... <laughs> That was a big pause. But Long pause. We can get to that eventually. I think we should just get right into it. Yes, into go into. So for anybody out there who doesn't know who Sucklord is, we quickly, after our check-in, talk about the person. He is a action figure artist who remakes action figures, especially the gay 
stormtrooper he's the most famous for and uh he's currently working on the ellen stag action doll that is true and he's a new york city legend anything else you want to add i just released my first adult film yes you did with our dear friend april flores who's a fucking legend yeah she's a legend and it's 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 an honor to like come out the gate dealing with such you know which such a high was, level of talent what was the genesis of this is it like i was like a sort of bucket list type of thing or is it like well actual... i've been trying to do this or i've been i grew up watching porn i grew up during the vhs era i, I used to watch porn on fucking super eight you Whoa. Know? Nice. and i used to, i've watched porn in movie theaters in, sure. in on the deuce back in the day my mother had an snm business she used to make nipple clamps and uh, other types of like uh sexual uh, snm devices and mm-hmm. You know, grew up in the village in the 70s and 80s, and she was selling these things in like the pleasure chest and the pink pussy cat. And I was always surrounded by porn. I watched Al Goldstein and Robin Brown, wow. and I was just surrounded with this stuff my whole fucking life. And I've always been attracted to the porn world. And I started going to AVN, shilling action figures, thinking I maybe had some some ideas that I wanted to execute in the mm-hmm. porn space as a director, a creator, and then once i went into the space i found that there were more than a few people that suggested to me that i should be on camera and then followed up right. and fucked me on camera and april was one of them we you know we met at the this body positivity panel that she was doing where she was you know it was mostly fat gals talking about being a, a, a fat girl in porn and talking about just like all you know the imaging and the messaging and the attitudes that surround that and all you know the progress that's been made in the sort of public consciousness about body shaming and stuff like that so you know i asked the question because you know i've always you know being someone that's watched porn my whole life having a rather <clears throat> average sized penis you know, feeling like a certain type of way and very self-conscious about the this ongoing, you know, like worship of huge dicks and little dick energy, big dick energy. You know, it's like this, this universal put down, small dick. You know, it's like, ah, I got, and got in my head about it. So I asked her, you know, I asked the question at the panel, like, it does this sort of like new acceptance of more variety in people's body types extend to guys with smaller dicks and uh and she's she came up to me after the after the thing and you know we made friends and she's like i never thought about that i used to think i was a size queen but now i'm thinking you know maybe i should be a little bit more sensitive about some of the language i use thank you very much well i know this you talked about this before we started recording but i've just learned recently as i'm perimetopause that the after menopause the vaginal canal actually shrinks great so you should be dating women in their 50s your age group they might have smaller vaginal canals and would enjoy I sm- <coughs> an <Yes>. average size <laughs> yeah yes and yes. not a you know not a not a fucking bbc yeah. which is like a whole other subject you know but i'm saying there's a demographic of women out there who need to get fucked and don't want a big cop well once i get this steroid shot in my back you know yeah get going people would love to watch this anyway so april and me we made a porn tape and we posted it on make love not porn because I just I'm a big fan of that site because mm-hmm. it's it's more like a reality TV based thing and it's sort of like porn it's not porn it's porn adjacent yeah and like I come from reality TV and I feel like for my first porno it's like I need to I need to put all my insecurities out here yeah you mm-hmm. know and it's like you can't do that in a regular porn shoot and who runs Lo- make love not porn S- Cindy Gallup yes that's it so, I love her she's amazing. anyway that was that so i got that out it was cool i i wanted i have more things i want to do i i had some some things in the chamber that i was going to put out that i had to postpone because you know shifting relationships but nevertheless my porn career can wait i'm really dealing with i want the floppy butthole porn of like stormtroopers invading your i i think the gay community would like that uh just gonna put can you elaborate on that a little we bit? We talked about it the last... Like a gay stormtrooper floppy butthole. Can you just... I, I, mean, I think that stormtroopers just... should be like, stop animation invading your butthole. Uh, 
<laughs> may, may, maybe. You like anal play. I, uh, yeah, that's true. And I will say that, like, you know, I've, my OnlyFans has been in beta phase for a few <laughs> years now. And, like, all the people that have subscribed to it have been gay dudes. So. You know. I got money. I'm just, yeah, I'm just saying I know the demographic of who wants to watch men in porn. Mm-hmm. It's gays. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Anyway, this is a podcast about shit and assholes. I was just bringing you back to your flappy butthole. Okay, well, I mean, but nothing has changed in that area lately. <laughs> Although I have been, since I was on this last time, I've been rimmed a bit. Oh. It's wow. like I don't generally, I mean, I love, I love that, but it's not something I really like push for. Mm-hmm. It's like it's I've looked at it in the mirror. It's like it's like I don't You're a little self-conscious about it. It's just more like unless you really want to do it. It's like I'm not going to campaign for it. Right, right, right. Was it floppy (laughs) when they were rimming you? Was it like it's the same as it always is. And she said, hey, you have a cute asshole. I was like, really? Maybe I'm just being too too self critical. Yeah, I mean now I want to see your butthole. Like I I feel like you you've brought it as you you. I mean that could be arranged. <laughs> you you've taken it to a you level. Guys go by the you really really yeah, yeah. Just I'll spread just, your butt. You want to do it right and, now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know if I want to see this. <laughs> I no one asked see. me. <laughs> uh, how are we gonna do this? I don't know if you can go behind the curtain. Oh, no, I mean this guy. I mean this guy. Oh, okay, this uh, it, all right. Then, I'm just gonna. Let's. That's I'm fine. Just, I'm gonna. St- I'm gonna. St- this is crazy. This is, this is a first for the show. I'm gonna. Say, Nobody's ever showed me their butthole live. I mean, you on might the have show. to see my dick too, or should I hide that? I mean, do whatever is easier. Cup it. All right, hang on. Just turn. I around. can't believe I'm seeing a butthole live on the all right, show. All right, let me take this my un- first. underwear off. Oh, you have a cute little tush. Thanks. How do, how should we do this? Bend over. Uh, okay. And just, spread your cheek. Just act like you're going to an exam. It's fine. Do I need a It's anatomy. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> now the underwear is coming off. <laughs> it's, pro- it's probably a little hairy. I mean, you might. Flashlight. This really is like, funny. I want to take a photo of this so bad because like the positioning is so great. Go ahead. Oh, it doesn't look that bad. This is the thing in question. You see there's like yeah, a yeah, little yeah. fold of skin there. Yeah, I do see a little bit of a fold of skin, but it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> well, I was going to have if that. If anything, I would say your butthole looks a little bit like you have labias. Uh, what? <laughs> it's so funny because I can see it in the mirror. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to shame you. I mean, you might put the underwear up before you sit back on that chair. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm quite showered, but. Maybe, I believe you. I believe maybe, you. maybe Ellen, when I go to the uh, <laughs> anal doctor, yeah, you could come along with me, and we yeah, can kind of. I'll just hold your hand. No, I mean maybe just sort of this art so direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could just sort of art direct like what he's gonna do. Yeah, I could. Like how he's gonna fix it? But didn't yeah. look. It wasn't like grotesque. No, it's not grotesque hideous, at all. Right? No, anyway. I was thinking it was gonna look like really bad hemorrhoids, like purpley, like no, and no, 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 like. I thought Grimace. it was gonna be something hanging out. Some I, mean, I saw big, a little bit in the mirror. Ass lips. I thought yeah, it was good. I thought it was gonna be like a it tube like just hanging out. A little bit like you have kind of a tiny inner labia near There's your There's like butthole. a little loose skin. Yeah. But it's thankfully it's not grotesque. Of course, you know, I'm just that type of person. I'm so self conscious that like I'll see yeah. any sort of like deviation Flaw. from the norm. I just want to cheers you for yeah. after 204 episodes, I got to see a guest's butthole. It's kind of odd. Well, also because most of these episodes you've been doing remotely, right? But n- recently we were doing more and more in person well, but yeah there was I, I, a many na- years of remote i'm almost starting to think now it's probably almost going to become mandatory that a, a guest comes so on is there, so is asshole? <laughs> yeah you would have loved it if so like you joanna a angel and avery t- jane showed their bubble. oh of course but i mean i'm not, I'm not like i i could see it in the mirror i thought it was gonna be like a tube hanging out that's what i'm, I'm thought, the way you described I'm, it i thought like, my hair floppy i'm, I'm thinking I'm, like I'm, you're I'm, prolapsing I'm, i must have some like sort of anal dysmorphia or something like no, that. we oh we all have body dysmorphia yes, in one way or the other i did not see your wiener or your balls at all i can't great well because that. they're small enough that i can compress <laughs> them into a, like a compact area and keep them just tuck sight. them back <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, t- I, t- t- I just tucked them. <laughs> I think I think you're fi- I think you're I think you're fine. Great, um, and that's probably the case across the board. Like all the things that I'm tripping about, I'm probably fine. I thought it was like literally gonna be hanging out, like yeah. literally like a prolapse. Yes, I follow this woman, man. On she's like an, a Brazilian chick, and she sticks the most extreme shit up her ass, like giant dildos, and she posted a prolapse on Twitter. Ugh. It was hanging out like it. Lo- it must have been a foot long. Yeah. Was it her prolapse? Yeah. 
Wow. That's I like mean, when you pull your sock out. Like, I mean, like her, whole, like, her whole large intestine was just out there. I yeah, seen I seen that so once gross. by this gay porn dude who can like manipulate it like an alien in and out of his butt. I mean, I mean, good for you, but no, no, no. But I'm just saying it's very not intense. You, uh, not you, good for them, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but oh, that's a weird thing. To yeah, that, that's towards. wild, man. I'm I, not. Yeah. That's that's okay. But the person who rimmed you, I'm assuming it's a woman. Yeah, and enjoyed your floppy butthole and thought it was cute. Like me and her, I didn't rim you just now, but I saw it, and and I would like to say you you do have body dysmorphia. It's not that bad. Great. Nevertheless, I still want a little yeah, well, nip and a little yeah. nip yeah, and yeah. tuck just yeah. to like yeah, get yeah. it, make it picturesque. If I'm going to be fucking on camera, yeah. yeah. Again, it's just like you know, I don't want it to be distracting. I mean, that's the only time I feel like anybody should be bleaching their any area down there is if they're on camera. I mean, like I'm not worried really about the cares. color. Of no, it. no, no. But I'm saying like cosmetically, I think if you're going to be on camera, I get it. But if you're just an everyday Joe schmo, yeah, like sure. stay away from that stuff. If oh man, I've watched a porn and they're 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 going they're commenting on the color of someone's asshole <laughs> i mean that's just like that that's that's I weird it's i mean ridiculous. i've seen some pretty that's fucking str- stupid pretty strange buttholes <laughs> you know like more floppy than yours yeah or just yours like, isn't flo- you should call it not floppy it's, it's <laughs> that's very <not> misleading <laughs> well it was just it's that weird little it's puffy that or it's little like puffy it's or flat, that yeah. little weird little yeah berry it's just an extra lip there's like a, a but there's berry. like a berry yes. hanging off of it but it's not know? even a it's not round like a berry it's, it's like a little puff it's like a little it's like an earlobe in your butthole okay fine but like you know how you, you should get it pierced you know mm, <laughs> but you know how like an asshole is it's sort of made out of these little tufts or whatever yes. these little these but little these you have little, a balloon knot yeah and it's but i've sometimes like one of those little rectal what i don't know what the term is it's those are like areas of sort of like contracted tissue sometimes one of them is just like inflamed you know yeah. and there's just like it's almost like there's like a, a little, little pinky yeah but it's not a hemorrhoid because it's not inflamed it's just like a residual of a hemorrhoid like yeah. i've been yeah. with girls and like you know you put my hand and there's like this whole extra like it's like hello like a little door a little handshake like a little <laughs> door that, like this little flap or this thing that just has to be moved away it's like an adventure yeah and you never see that in porn but you see that in everyday life just like people have just like one of their little hemorrhoids is just a little I guarantee yeah. you there's someone out there that, that like loves that and they'll pay extra for that. Yeah, gay men. I mean, I'm saying I get it. If you don't <laughs> if you're not into that, fine. That's 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 your body. But I bet you there's a lot of people that are actually into that. Uh, Why don't we make a film for Hump of stormtroopers invading your floppy butthole <laughs> he was and like the storm make thing. money off of it? Well, that's yeah, his thing. Yeah, 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 no, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yes. How about yeah? How does let's we've already got to yes. Yeah. We're already at yes. Good. Let's make. Is there more of this? <laughs> oh, it's chilling. I have to save some for my wife. We haven't. We haven't uh, got anything else. I'll take a shot of whatever. There's I'm tequila ready. behind you, and there's a shot glass right behind you. Okay, okay. start getting the podcast. Got any weed? I do have weed. Sorry, but I don't mean to, to be. In, ta- I, in terms of keeping this thing on the road, I like to like keep. <laughs> okay, like, reward me with a smoke at the end, sure, if you can. But okay, we should probably talk about the colonoscopy, right? Yes, please. Yeah. Let's. Okay, but just if you're interested, there is the killer right behind you. Okay, I don't so want to get. Right. I mean, I'm like I'm getting loose. I'm I already, I'm sitting here in my underwear. My asshole is already <laughs> reviewed. But we really should. We it's really a- should talk about the colonoscopy. I'm going to applaud you that after four and a half years of this podcast. I got to see somebody else's butthole. It's man, and now it's mandatory. Yeah, I think it's mandatory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, colonoscopy. We've, I mean, I'm, we've, I'm afraid we've, it, it we've might not. It. it might be anticlimactic, but we'll try anyway. Okay, so uh, you know, I'm at the age, and I'm at that point right now where I have Medicaid, and I'm like hooked up. Like it's paying for a lot of shit. So I'm just like I'm just gonna consume as much socialism. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna be I'm gonna take I'm gonna be I'm gonna take all the all the socialized medicine I yeah, can get. You should. And I'm gonna take advantage of everything. Agree. Uh, I've been getting all this dental work done and all kinds of shit. And it's like it's just my right as a citizen in yeah. the first world country to fucking enjoy you know top tier medical care at no cost. So I'm doing it. <laughs> And I was like, got got my colon. I was gonna go. I got to get my asshole checked. I'm in my fifties. It's like that's a, that's the deal. And I live in Chinatown. And I will say, 
One of the great things about living in Chinatown is there are so many doctors down there. There's so many doctors and dentists and like everything. It's like there's like it's like a, it's like a hub of like just like medical talent and excellence. The first doctor to look at my butthole was in Chinatown. Where at? It was uh, Mount Sinai's. They have a an office there. Mm. Yeah. Great. I went to this little family practice on Elizabeth Street. And I went up there and I, you know, met the doctor. You have to have this whole meeting beforehand. You know, they like discuss everything and tell you what you need to do and like all the preparation as if that's like a big deal. Because apparently the preparation and the, is like a big deal for some people. It for, was for me. It wasn't nothing to me. Ugh. But like the doctor sat there. I chilled there with like for an hour shooting the shit with this doctor. Love. Telling stories about, you know, Chinatown and New York and whatever. And he's just trying to like make me feel like okay with what's about to happen. He doesn't know who he's dealing with, but it's like he's like, okay, you know, so this is what you got to do. And then I got the script and I got the big jug of, oh, the, yeah. of the weird powder oh, the and like all. No, it. I, why? I must be different because <laughs> I mean it tastes like shit. But for me, I she had a different experience. It tastes like, like Gatorade. It tastes like shit to me, but it just it just got everything out. It just it just yeah. started and it was like done, but it it sucked in the sense of like this flavor wise. I blocked out the time. I went to the pharmacy. I got all the things. I got the little, they gave me the little pill. They gave me the big jug of the powder that I had to mix with the water. I took all the things. I blocked the whole evening out. I stayed home. I watched uh, episodes of some Star Wars show. I don't know. And I, oh, I was watching old Indiana Jones movies, getting ready to watch the Dial of Destiny. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just like catching up on my Indiana Jones and I'm like drinking this gross shit. It doesn't taste that bad. It tastes like Pedialyte or just yeah. like, it's just like a, Gatorade or just like it's just like a pout like yeah. whatever I can drink I used to do the master cleanse you know we just uh, yeah. literally yeah. drink a fucking glass of salt water nine of them and just like shh, you know whatever so this is nothing to me so I'm just drinking it I took the little pills I'm watching Indiana Jones and 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 the kingdom of the crystal skulls I gave it as much of a chance as I could it's really not that good <laughs> no, and then every 20 not. minutes or so I'd get up there and just like shoot yellow hot wa piss water out of my asshole yes <laughs> and like but i didn't find that unpleasant at all it was like Ugh. felt great what's wrong with it it made me feel like i had food poisoning and my asshole was broken really yeah i just felt like it was pissing out of my ass no nope, not fun i was just like <laughs> <laughs> and it would just come out and like every time it came out it would be a little more clear yeah yeah i, I had the same thing just like yellow then by the end it was this clear fucking liquid I but it was just suck going to the bathroom that much it didn't bother me at all because i like i set the night aside for that yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't inconvenient to me and i was just like shitting pissing pissing out of my asshole and like getting all that bullshit out of there and like all the little chunks all the little lego bricks came out <laughs> immediately <laughs> and i just felt Action like figures. i just felt very clean and light and just like you know just like loose and thin and slim and and svelte and just like empty and just felt great and i didn't it wasn't that much of an inconvenience and then so but i go in there i guess this must be horrible for some people because i go in the next morning at like 9 30 and the first thing the lady says after i give her the clipboard with all the bullshit that i had to send out she's like oh did you have fun yesterday <laughs> i was like actually yes i did yes i did i had a great time like easy peasy yeah so i go in there and they you know they lay me down they put me in the little thing and i'm like and it's like it's so weird how vulnerable you are yes you know like you i don't even know these people yes i just met you and like you're about to like make render me unconscious yeah like, like an alien dig something up probe way deep in my yeah. ass yeah. and i'm like trust you yeah that's weird. As I'm going out, the fucking the, the the anesthesiologist is like making Michael Jackson jokes <laughs> because they gave me propanol. Propofol. Propofol, which is, I guess, is what killed him. Yeah. And I'm just. Oh, I made that same joke to my anesthesia. <laughs> and he goes, I'm not going to walk out of the room like that doctor did to Michael. And I was like, well, well that's these good guys to know. were leaning into that yeah. shit. It's like, oh, yeah, you feel like Michael Jackson now as I'm <laughs> failing. <laughs> fading out and then you're like i've never felt like michael jackson i've never molested a child I, <laughs> anyway it was delightful if that's what dying is like i'm fine with it yeah same i was unaware of anything I was, it's so fast I was it a, works so I, fucking fast i was erased from the world i had no consciousness whatsoever and it was not unpleasant at all I almost didn't want to come back. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not suicidal. 
and then I came back to life and the guy was like, uh, your colon's great. You don't have to come back for five years. And that was it. And that was really all there was to it. I'm surprised five years because I was told five to seven years and I had one tiny little polyp. Oh, and, oh, and they lasered it out? Yeah, they just tweezered it. And oh. they tested it for cancer cells and there was nothing. I don't know. I don't know how these things work. Me neither. I'm not an. I'm not an. I expert. got the five year one too. You did yeah. too. They said like, yeah, you're fine. Everything's oh. clear. It looks great. Nothing to worry about. Come back in five years. Interesting. And then that was it. I mean, I know people that have all kinds of like digest- digestive issues and Crohn's disease and just like all kinds of shit. Where just like the everyday functioning of just taking a shit is a struggle for them. Yeah. And it's like I. I have so much sympathy for them. Thank God that's not my burden. Yeah. At at, at the moment, but fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it could be worse. Yeah. They could go. It could find all kinds of stuff. You got a roof over your head. It could be like the in scene in Indiana and Jones Temple of Doom with the fucking. <laughs> I've heard a lot of. Shit. I've heard a lot of shit. You know, people go in there and be like, "Yo, you got a baseball growing in your oh. fucking guts, and that needs to come out right now, and you're gonna have to be on fucking diet. You're gonna have a fucking colostomy bag for yeah. the rest of your life, and this is happening now. I Deal can't with even it. Imagine. Hopefully, your insurance pays for it. Yeah. Aye. And. I have my friend. She she's she's off the class me bag thing, but yeah, she's like it was really bad. How is she doing? It's way better. She's Good. going through therapy. She's like uh chemo. Oh, so wait. she's great. Good. <sighs> but yeah, it does suck. At least you didn't have any of that stuff. Because that could be disastrous. So clean bill of health, butthole, asshole, whatever you want to call it, is all clean. We have to whistle. counter blessings. I when mean we the have thing them. is the colon isn't really the asshole. I mean the, the colon, colon is yes. a whole other realm. Yeah, but they yeah. check your rectum too. They do everything. Yeah. I'm saying, like, as long as all that's good, you're fu- you're cool. I'm gonna go get some prostate imaging next. Whoa! Because apparently they don't do the finger test anymore. Yeah. No, they don't. Yeah. You know, every time I go to my doctor, I'm like, "Listen, doc, I'm sorry to ask you, but can you check my prostate?" And he's like, "No." <laughs> he's like, "Go over here and get them. They'll go take pictures of your prostate, and I'll give you my opinion about it." <laughs> They're like, "We're done with that shit." doctors man the thing is it's weird this whole shit is weird because it's like as you're getting older and you need to take responsibility for your long-term medical care yes you have to understand that the doctors and the administrators of all these cares whether they're doctors and medical professionals or you know alternative or holistic healers all of them believe that their way is the way yes And that they will discourage you from doing other things. Yes. You know, dealing with my back shit, my chiropractor is like, never go to a doctor for this shit. You know, and the doctor is like, we don't know anything about chiropractors. It's like, and it's like you, you, we want, we're, we're in pain, we're suffering. We, we don't know. We're lacking information. We would love to just like surrender our authority to somebody that knows better than we do and just like let yes. them make the decisions for us. And they're not going to do that because these are people too that have their own particular interests and agendas. And like you personally have to be the one that decides what's right or what's wrong. I'm an all of the above type. Yeah. It's like, I will take the medical treatment. I'll take the fucking acupuncture. I'll take the fucking quackery. I'll take everything. I'll do all of it as long as I feel good. Yes. I don't give a fuck. And like each, but the thing is each of the administrators of these treatments believes that their thing is the answer. Yes. And everybody else is full of shit. Yeah. And you have to, that, I think that's the result of capitalism to be honest with you. Yes. A hundred percent. And, and like you as the, patient or the recipient of the care the the administrator of your own body you have to make the decision yes you know yeah you have to be an advocate well, I think too, it's like whenever you go to these people like whatever's working is working yeah if it's if it's if it it's, makes it's one me doctor, feel better i'll take it you're feeling better physically if you're getting like test results that, that 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 actually acknowledge that then yeah that's great yeah my chiro i'd never believe in chiropractor until i, I was having this before i realized i had a fucking system in my back but he was like, you shouldn't see me unless it's like, like really like crazy. So it was like maybe once a year at, if at the most. Really? Yeah. He was like, he's not this guy. He's like, I'm not going to, some people in my profession will have you come back more and more when they really don't even be doing that stuff to you because they're actually doing more harm to kind of keep you like on Agreed. the dole. Yeah. So in really? that sense, oh yeah. So this guy was like, he's like really old, but he's, he was great. He was like, you should only come to me if it's like, I mean, disastrous. And he did, you know, help me out a little bit, but that's again, not realizing what was actually going on until sure. I had an actual MRI. Yeah, sure. So and it's, it's like, you know, when you find out, you have information and you can kind of do with it as you please. 
I think. I mean, you've got to you've got to ultimately make your own decisions. Yeah. it's your body. It's your shit. Nobody really gives a fuck. Yeah, yeah. I see can. all kinds of people, and it's like I when said, want to make a buck. They care enough, but they don't care that much. Yeah. yeah. I think it's also finding the right type of person that's just, I'll work with you. We'll get you in a good spot. And then here's like, I have some people, like friends of mine that I, I go see, I do body work with. And like, they're, they're the kind of people that actually, you'll see them for a month or three weeks. And then they're like, here's the exercise. Just keep doing that. You'll be fine. They sort, and they sort you all out. It's great. It's fantastic. And they're not just like, keep coming back. Because again, that's, just, that's the quackery part I don't enjoy. I don't like. Where you're like, oh, you're almost there. Yeah, but it's just like, it's just weird because, you know, everybody's hustling for money. I go to see this guy out in Brighton Beach, right? And it's like, I told him, it's like, oh, you're pretty excited that you're getting to, like, bilk Medicare to give me this fucking shot, aren't you? And he's like, yeah, kind of, you know. I mean, he he knows what's up. I, I tell him, it's like, I know you would love to continue to bill. Yeah. You know, and I say that to my doctor. And he's like, yeah, I would. But I mean, it's like, you know. I mean, like, I'm like, still like an ethical person, yeah. but like, I just like, I feel like it's like going into it, knowing that the doctor wants the doctor. He wants to get paid to doctor. Yeah. yeah. And that means billing your insurance company for doing shit. Yeah. And he doesn't yeah. give a fuck if it works I mean, people, I, half the doctors I see don't even take insurance. So I got to really? pay the pocket, but like, I've gotten way better results with them than I've had with like traditional, like, you know. Which is also bullshit. We need to have more socialist medicine in this yeah. country where we have but again, like, enough money for it. It's incredible it's all, how all much I need. Yeah. Yeah. But I've had great doctors that have like, like hospital special surgery. Are fantastic. They're amazing. I've had nothing but excellent things to say about them. And like they're not, you know, they're not out there to just bilk you. Sure. But or, I, mean, I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that at the end of the day, when it comes to your health and your well-being, you're the executive. Yes. Oh, yeah. And yeah. like the other all the medical professionals that are advising mm-hmm. you and suggesting things to you, they're subordinate. And yes. like ultimately you ha- and you have to take their even take their expert judgments into into question. Oh, yeah. You have to advocate for yourself and then figure yeah. out what's the best thing yeah. for you. And I just feel like some people probably feel inclined to just surrender to expertise and just go along yeah, yeah, with yeah. whatever somebody in authority what or, or perceived authority tells them to do. And like, you can't, you can't do that. You have to really advocate for yourself. Agreed. Yeah. That's what I mean. I've- I mean, it's funny though, because it's like, there's like a whole spectrum. It's like, there's the, the, the nurturing doctor that like makes you feel good and is concerned and asking you questions and, you know, giving you the, 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 the sort of nurturing that you need. And then there's also that weird Asbergery hotshot <laughs> that's just like really good at what they do and handles it. But like, you feel like an object, you know, when you're on that table and they're examining oh. you and you just feel like a specimen. Any surgeon, they, all they want to do is cut you open. Yeah. They love that shit. Yeah, let them do it if it helps. Yeah. But it's like, I'm not looking to this particular person for yeah. the, the emotional stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, I just want, like, I don't give a fuck if you're just like a, a weird, you know, expert. Just do the thing yeah. that you're really good I'm, at. I'm, I'm all about results. If yeah. the thing I'm doing with you is giving me results, awesome. If it's I don't not, need you I to go, be a nice then guy. Then I go somewhere else. As long as they're fucking professional, they're not like fucking. I hate I hate doctors that make jokes. That actually kind of bugs me. Like when you go in there, they're kind of like like a stand up comedian. I'm like, just 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 be normal. Like I don't need you to what be that, that be that person. Uh, what was that Robin Williams movie? Fucking Patch, Patch Adams. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't need a doctor showing up in there with no clown <laughs> nose. If that, I'd be like, fuck you. I'm out of here. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. It's Wasn't a he a children's doctor? He Still. was doing it for the kid. <laughs> if I saw my kid, if I was my kid, I'm like, Doc, you gotta, you gotta chill here. Let's just. Uh, I mean, that's a crazy ass fucking job. A children's doctor? No, just like looking up people's assholes. Oh my god! Yeah. I mean, imagine it's you like start at the bottom and you stay there. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that's a Rodney Dangerfield joke. Yeah, so. yeah it's like a Drake joke too. <laughs> but it's like, I don't know. What do you do? It's like, I'm just a guy, I'm trying to run a business here and I'm trying to keep my employees paid and I look up people's assholes in their colons as my job and like, I happen to look up this person's ass and I'm seeing some very, very severe problems. Yeah, but God when this bless person them for wakes being up, there. Yeah, but then when this person wakes up, I'm going to have to tell them, yo, you are in trouble. Yeah. Uh, Disaster. What is my personality? And like, where am I emotionally? It's like, oh God, it's like, I have to, now, nah, like, I, just, I would prefer this person just to remain like a biological specimen, but now I have to deal with them on an emotional level and tell them. 
stuff that's gonna hurt them and oh god well yeah being a doctor is a specialized thing it's like you have to like you know that's part of the gig i just wonder what part of the training involves the the human element and when having a long ass residencies having to break bad news to people yeah it's probably just like take with a ten thousand hours, like being a resident. Yeah, but we we had Dr. Carmen Fong on the show, and she said she became an ass doctor because she wanted to help people with cancer. Like she realized that that colonoscopy is the easiest, best way to detect and stop it early. Right. And then she and it's also, a treatable cancer too. Very. Yeah. And she said, but then she realized she was called into the emergency room more times than she'd like to admit for removing foreign objects from people's butthole <laughs> so <laughs> you signed up for i just don't understand like you study all this time to like learn how to address the scientific and the medical and the technical parts of it and then what part of the training is there when you have to look tell somebody to their face you're gonna die yeah, this is yeah, not treatable, and you're fucked. And you're that's tired. that's experience, and I feel like mentorship and just being on the get on the job. I just yeah. don't know how much you know. I don't know if there's I mean, any they, formal training in that. I don't area. know about doctors, but they say that veterinarians have a very high risk of suicide oh, because they love the animals too, and giving those that bad news to people about their loved ones, their loved animals, is a yeah. really hard thing. Something like a special person yeah. to do that day yeah. in and day out, especially yeah. if you're like a surgeon. And a trauma, like a ER, I couldn't imagine that, day in and day out. No, but, it has an incredible effect on people's mental health, and it's like, yeah. it seems like there's no recourse for that. It's like we're well, all expected to just like deal with it. Well, that's why we're not doctors. Oh my god, <laughs> my god, I could never. Yeah, yeah, I'm here to make pretty pictures and talk about. I'd have to be holes. a doctor that was like, I work in the classroom. I'm not actually working in the real world. <laughs> like, yeah. Anyway, uh. I think this is over, right? Like, we, we're, are we at the end? Look at this. We'll play a game. She she choices. Is. So let's do a palate cleanse. We get two choices. And oh, since God, you do, and again. so you do your uh, suck chip thing. <laughs> Would you rather eat potato chips for the rest of your life? I'm talking breakfast, lunch, and dinner, like every day until you die. Exclusively. Exclusively. No other food. No other food. Just potato chips. And like, I'll give you, you can do all the flavors, but just it has to be a potato chip. Or once a year, you eat a giant large soup bowl of shit. <gasps> How big is the bowl? Like a fucking, like if you go to like, you know, get like a big matzo ball soup. If I had to, I'd take that. The poo. I can't live on potato chips for the rest of my life. That's what I thought you'd say. Ellen? I'm in the same camp only because I, 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 if I eat too many potato chips, my mouth hurts. Like that's so. You just can't live on that shit. Yeah. Uh, come on, let's be real. I think this I isn't a real scurvy. challenge, by I mean, the way. I mean, who's enforcing this? Like... Who's enforcing this? Is there somebody with a gun to my <laughs> head yes. making me eat this bowl of shit? This what is kind game. of this shit? Is this a fictional is it game? Human shit? Is it animal oh, shit? Is that my is a own good shit? Question. Like, gets more specific. Shit. It's shit. I, shit. Hey, hey, eat there's your shit own and shit. There's shit. Human and shit. In this case, human shit. And there's shit. Call for your own human shit. Human shit. You know what? You know, you guys should do these things. Instead of making your guests having to answer, why don't you eat a fucking bowl of shit? I answered. And let's bring it out, Jerry. A bowl of shit. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Dave? Bowl of shit. I've been or potato thinking about chips? this, man. Like, I guess I'd have to go with the shit only because I can't like just eat potatoes for the rest of my life. That's why the game is called shit. Did you not hear the name of the game? There's no shitty choices. choices. It's called shitty choices. <laughs> it's not no, called like no. uh, slightly inconvenient choices. No, all the answers are terrible. <laughs> Thank God they're only in the abstract, and, and then we live true. in a world yes. where it's a fun game. There's no, there's, there's no <laughs> rules. I can eat whatever I want. Yes, and, and I don't have to eat shit. In this moment, in this particular it. moment, though, you had to pick, and you picked shit. We all picked shit because no one wants to eat potato chips for the rest of their lives. You would die like five years scurvy. in. Scurvy. You die. You get scurvy. I mean, there's your no, mouth would be no, like no, fucking no, like no, like yeah, just yeah, like like tough. It'd be like you're, you did be too much sodium. There was no nutritional value. No. But your mouth would be like like a fucking like like a trained MMA fighter. <laughs> All right. So quick news story. <laughs> this is a light news day because I've been like really crazy the last couple of weeks. Oh, but this was this doctor 
again on the New York Post because I literally just plug. It's like insane how many stories. If, if you don't know, the New York Post has a whole section that's called poop. So it's like a mind. <laughs> yeah. The whole poop really? section. Yeah. Oh. Health poop section. And this doctor is basically telling you like why you never wear your shoes inside. Because oh. obviously, it's supposed to be in New York. Because the amount of like just bacteria, E. coli shit that lives in the in the in the in the deep wells of your sneakers and shoes. Every surface of New York City sidewalk is covered with a thin yeah. film of excremental residue. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly what she talks about. Permanently. So, I mean, you're like, bringing it into your home. You bring it to your home. It's it's. I've seen people. I've gone to people's houses, and I've seen them with their shoes on, sitting on their couch. Like on the bed, I'm like, are you out of your fucking I people, mind? I make people take their shoes off when they come into my house. But every once in a while, you know, whatever, it slips. And I'm like with a dude and he's like in my living room. Yeah. And he's got his But you clean up on afterwards. my rug. The rug that I fuck on. And you're standing there with your little fucking grimy Air e. Force ones. Yeah. Shoes. Covered with doo-doo. And like you're just chilling. Yeah. And I'm looking at you. And well, you I've don't seen, even know what you're doing. My sister-in-law came to visit once, and I saw her pick up her suitcase and put it on. Oh, my God. We gave her, her our bed. And she just put it on her bed. And I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? That thing has been laying in JFK on a fucking belt going round and round. It's covered in shit. Dave is an er, uber germaphobe. I go through <laughs> I go through weird phases. But when I saw I, I was like out of my mind. I'm like, are you crazy? Why are you doing that? And it's I go to their house, and like everybody's wearing shoes. But it's like when I see it like on the couch or like on this laying in their bed, I'm like, are you out of your mind? Like street clothes on your clean bed sheets? That freaks me out. Yeah. It's like white people shit. Like every, <laughs> like every, everybody that, like Asian people, Spanish people, black people, it's like always like just take your shit off. White people don't give a fuck. What is, what is, what is up with that? You'll live forever. (laughs) (laughs) Privilege. It's that weird, like, like, force field. It's not going to kill me. I tried to do shoes free in my apartment, and my ex, who was Hispanic, refused. Really? Refused. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that is that. That's why you dumped him, right? No. That's one of the many reasons. (laughs) The myriad of reasons. But yeah, he refused, and it's just gotten to the point where I'm like, well, I have cats that shit in a box, and then drag all that all over the apartment. Yeah, Yo, that's that the one shit thing. is cleaner than fucking... It is, it, but it is, it drives me but nuts. I'm just like... The we, litter, we have two new kittens, and we used to use for our old cats, like a thicker litter that didn't really track. And then this, they didn't like that, so we have a fine powdery mist. Ooh. It is... It, it is seriously driving me fucking crazy Some because like bougie ass cats. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. I love them, but it's just like it drives me crazy because like now the whole hallway. I'm ch- I'm still I'm trying to figure out all kinds of solutions, and nothing's worked so far. And it's 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 really getting to the point where I'm going kind of crazy. Speak of the devil. Yeah, there's a couple of cats right there. But yes, uh, so just you know, in New York, if you can, just take your shoes off. I mean, it's kind of too late for all of that. I mean, I mean, we're all fucked, but it's like you, you mitigate it the best you can. Exactly. Yes. But also, as my grandma used to always say, a peck of dirt a day never killed anybody. I don't. I mean, don't like. I mean, I don't what, know what the things we're eating. <laughs> what the fuck kind of dirt is in there? Like fucking mosquito wings. And- yeah. I saw some thing recently, and it. I ride my bike to work a lot, so I I, I don't take the subway that much unless it's like completely raining out or something, but. I had to take a subway a couple days ago <laughs> and I recently saw this video of this guy with a, I forgot what kind of meter it was, but it was like basically like just the, it, it registered the amount of germs that were in the subway. And this guy's, I'm wearing a mask because not for COVID, but it's like for fucking this old, the disgusting that's, and like, you don't, that even, you fucking don't need to freaked, know, you don't need to know that. I know. I don't even know, but I'm like, why did I, why did I just watch this? It like, it, it ruined me. Yeah. Cause you're a germaphobe. I put this mask on. I'm like, Jesus Christ. But then it's like, you know, yeah, but there's like, only so much you can fucking do. I know. Like, and it's like, I gotta live my life. To not even know about it. I gotta it. live it's my like, life. You need to put up in yourself in a bubble in the no. middle of the forest. Listen, um, listen but you my, know, my, my recourse to all of this shit is like, we'll all be dead soon. Yeah. And like we won't have to I made it this far. This. Yeah. Hey, I, I have one friend who's a bartender and he's like you. He's never had COVID and his wife has had it. And like he's surrounded by dirt, dirt being a bartender, yeah, yeah. you know, in New York City. So I go through weird phases. But the one thing that never gets me is sex. Like that's just like, yeah, whatever. No. 
that's a that's He's like, like easy. STIs and germs. Fuck it. Like it's just like, but like anything afterwards, like you know, you're. Well, just like, I mean, it's always with the same person, right? Yeah. Well, exactly. sometimes not. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? That's a whole nother. That's a different kind of podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying that it's funny that you could be like a germaphobe or you know whatever, germaphobe adjacent. But like anytime when sex is involved, you're like yeah, whatever. <laughs> you're like eh. <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking like any crazy. I, every like, male germaphobe I know is exactly like that. Yeah, it's like sex is like, like germs are gross, but pussy's in front of me. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah, it's like I mean, there's, there's germs and there's germs. Yeah, yeah. there's the, those kind of germs. Exactly with those kind of germs. Yeah, like the pussy <laughs> germs, the butthole germs. If she's cute, what am whatever. I, but it is funny that like you know if you're freaked out about germs, like pussy or whatever, if whatever you're into. Doesn't freak you out, you know. It's, it's, I always find that very funny. So take on the rest of the world like it's pussy. I mean, look, I gotta live my life. <laughs> I gotta live my life. I'm not like, but there are times where you're like, I still do the thing though. Where I can't. It's so hard for me to touch the door handle after I leave a bathroom. It like, it's like crippling. But you'll stick your finger up some random chick's butthole, no problem. Yeah, yep. yeah. I'm not, I'm not that first of all it's a, oh yeah Thursday night three buttholes it's just like <laughs> but not, yes 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 it's like you don't think about it because you're like in the moment but like a bathroom like I'm at work I have to automatically pull a piece of paper paper towel and I open the door with it and I throw it into the uh, weird it's like so it's like bizarre man yeah because like you're a like, germaphobe you know except for for buttholes and pussy yeah it's kind of crazy yeah how that works anyway with that being said, like it's like suck Lord. Lord. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on our show. It's over, right? We this is it, like right? we're 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 we in like literally the home stretch right here. Well, thanks, guys. Thank I you mean, for being on the show. Please plug away. Tell us where we can find your porn again. Your your wonderful toy work. Whatever you got. Okay, so I created a whole separate uh, internet universe for my porn stuff. Okay, it's suck. S U X X X Adelic dot com. Oh. And that's the link tree that links to all my <laughs> your hor- your adult world. content. It was basically my OnlyFans and my make off not porn. I just like I've just realized that it's like you can't really show that shit on Instagram. Yeah. Nope. And I just don't even. I've, I've created like a whole separate ecosystem. Gotcha. For all of that yep. stuff. Okay. If you and it's like I also understand like I'm already known for certain things, mm-hmm. and that the people that are following me for my toys and my cheeky irreverent social commentary might not necessarily want to see my dick. So there's like a yeah. big separation. Like you have to intentionally seek out yeah. the, the the X-rated part. So there's like that. that. And then You're age a, gating. You don't want to cross streams. Well, uh, I just feel like, you know, you when when you're do, when you're doing porn stuff, you and then you're coming into it from being like uh, somebody that does something other than that, it's like maybe you don't want to you can, you don't necessarily have to like inflict it on people. They have yeah, to I get it. I think it's smart. Yeah. yeah. So there's that. And then you could do uh, psychedelic, suck lord, whatever. You search for those things in any of the major, you know, social media platforms. You'll find and you. you'll find me and then you're gonna have to deal with whatever. Whatever cool. you, whatever you get. Well said. Yeah. Thanks again for being on the show. Great, great um, buttholes, buttholes, shit, poopy, asshole, shit. Yeah. That's our new diarrhea. outro. Diarrhea, <laughs> diarrhea, <laughs> diarrhea. diarrhea. Excellent. Well, thanks for laughing and learning everything but with us. And happy pooping, everybody. Yeah. And enjoy your butthole. For more info, go to heypoopypodcast.com or email us at heypoopypodcast at gmail.com. You can send in show ideas, guest requests. Check us out on Twitter at heypoopy, Instagram at heypoopypodcast, TikTok, heypoopypodcast, and our awesome new Facebook fan page. Go check it out at heypoopypodcast. We're also on Discord at heypoopydumps, or you can contact Contact us at our new awesome hotline, 203-998-5579. Hey Poopy Podcast is brought to you by Perfect for Entertainment. Produced by Dave and Ellen. Edited by Dave. Executive producer, Stormy Leather. Theme song by Jordan Pearlson. Hey Poopy!